Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Joni Young and I'm an acrylic artist and instructor. Today I'm going to be showing you all how to paint this pretty winter landscape. We'll be working on a smaller canvas using just a few colors and I've got lots to show you so stay tuned and hit that subscribe. Okay, so like I mentioned before, we're going to be working on a 9x12 canvas today. You can use any size canvas of your choice. Um, I primed it once with white acrylic gesso, just one coat. I let it dry, and I'm going to begin with my number 30 filbert brush, getting it just a little bit wet first. And I'm going to take a little bit of blue. I'm using phthalo blue and neon purple violet or luminous violet if you don't have either of these colors there's lots of different options you can use any blue that you want any pink quinacridone violet magenta or purple so with each color here i didn't blend it around to make one color i'm just going to go directly onto the canvas and i'm going to pull diagonal look at those beautiful colors work out of the brush more purple here and then more blue there. I'm going to take a little bit more now. I'm going to take a little bit of water, just a little bit. You don't want to have a bunch of drips in your brush. I'm going to keep going gently, diagonally. Okay, the next color without washing my brush off, I've got some titanium white, too much actually, <laughs> and I'm going to start pulling lines, just lines with it first. You can even go back and forth like this. a little bit more now. I'm going to start to push and slightly scoop. Scoop. When we scoop a little bit like that to painting a whimsical looking sky. So I'll just add a little bit like that. And then without washing my brush off, I'm gonna wiggle in wet on wet with a little bit of white here. I'm just gonna go side to side, back and forth. And then pull and flick up. Can't see anything yet, but it's giving it a very soft and pretty sort of a blurry look. So you can do this a little bit all over while it's wet like this. And then we get a real magical looking sky. The next brush I'm going to be using is one of my mop brushes and this creates some really nice um, bushes, foliage. I'm just going to tap in a little bit to my white here. bit of white and I'll start so just about halfway down the canvas and then I'm gonna bring up a little bit bring it up a little bit higher and then I'm gonna continue along the side
and then I'm going to pull and flick. So I'm pulling off a little bit of what I just tapped on there. I'm going to catch the sides and pull and sweep a little like that as well. So there are benefits to painting wet on wet like this. It gives you that sort of an oil painting look to your, your paintings and, and your paint. So you can make your acrylics act like oils if you really want to. It's just about having the right temperature, the speed in which you're painting, and a bit of water. Uh, if you really want to make your acrylics act like oils, there are mediums to do that, and there are actual paints called uh, acrylics that act like oils and you can get uh, the reverse you can get or you can get the opposite you can get oils that act like acrylics too so there's so many different things and options out there okay so I think I am just going to take a little bit more white just a little bit here I'll show you how I'm loading my brush a little bit kind of just smushing it there towards the bottom I'm going to add another little bit here in some areas. Just making these little snowy peaks stand out a little bit more. So it's starting to dry now and uh, I'm unable to get that soft blurry look. Um, but I really like what I've got here to start. And I want to mention I don't have any reference photos. I have no idea what I'm painting. You guys know what I'm painting because obviously you saw the thumbnail that brought you here to this video. Um, so this is kind of what I like to do on my channel. It keeps me different and separate from um, many other art channels out there. Keeps things fresh and exciting for you guys too. If I'm not excited about painting, it's going to come through to you guys. And I think that you'll, you'll be bored watching if you get the sense or feeling that I'm bored. I'm never bored painting. I don't know. I've been doing this for so many Many years and I never it's something I just never get tired of I'm extremely passionate about painting and teaching so I hope you guys get that through um, your screen and that you feel my good energy and it rubs off a little bit on you and it helps you guys get motivated to paint so back to this painting what am I gonna add now well obviously this could be a path it could also be some cascading waterfalls um, I'm not totally sure, but I definitely love this sky here, so I don't want to do too much there, but I think I'm going to start painting some trees because I really love painting trees. And you guys uh, always ask me for landscape paintings, so I'm glad because that's what I enjoy painting the most. Uh, with the exception, I've got a little bit of everything here on my channel. I've got well over 400 videos and tutorials and many playlists to go through. I've got a little filbert brush here that I'm going to start to use to create some trees and this one is a number four and I'm going to take a little bit of my violet here with my blue so I don't want to I don't want to over blend I want to have it kind of just naturally um, kind of blend in where it is some areas will be a little bit more violet in tone and some will be a little bit more of a phthalo blue so I think I want to have uh, a tree, I'll have a tree right about here. If I think too much about it, I'll hesitate and then I'll kind of lose my, my vibe of what I'm doing here. I like to really paint spur of the moment and try not to hesitate and just go with my, my ideas as they come to me. Okay, so I need to decide what kind of a tree I'm going to do. Am I going to do more of like a pine tree or am I going to do more of sort of like a birch tree or an oak tree? And I think just with the way the top is going there and this little bump here and there, I think I'm, I know what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm going to just switch over to my liner brush so I can start adding my branches because I definitely know what I'm leaning towards here see if you guys can guess so I'm just gonna scoop I definitely uh, recommend you guys um, follow along step by step with me I 
I uh, invite you to. I'm gonna turn my brush over and just start wiggling and pulling. And feel free to share my videos. A lot of people ask if they're allowed. That's why I'm saying that, that yes, you are allowed. And I'm here to teach you guys, help inspire you. Little tricks and, and tips and painting hacks I've learned over uh, 25 years or so that I've been painting. So I'm just going to add few little branches here and there, just wiggling, twisting. I kind of twist it in between my, my fingers here. And then sometimes I'll go the opposite way and use a little bit more water, especially where I want to have uh, more delicate looking branches. So I, I won't push hard at all. I'll just barely touch with the tip of my brush. Adding just a little bit of water to your brush will really help. If you don't have enough water, you might feel the need to push too hard and then you'll be unhappy with the width of your branches. And if that happens, don't worry. You can just cover it up with a little bit of foliage or snow and just learn from your mistakes and give it time. You'll know for next time. Okay. I am gonna use uh, one of my little mop brushes here and I'm gonna add, just tap into my violet and my blue again. And I'm gonna add some foliage, some little treetops here. I love this, these little, uh, brushes. Okay, and then I'm going to go right into my white without drying or washing. I don't want to dry the painting off and I'm not washing my brush out. Just tap in a little bit of white over top. Leaving some of that purple violet color that we've made. Um, still visible, right? We need that. If you notice too much of a pattern going on, like maybe your branches are all looking the exact same, then kind of turn each time you tap, pick your brush up and turn in another direction. I'm going to add a little bit more right here. I feel like I'm just missing something in this area, so I'm going to add a few a few more right there and a little bit right here at the base of the tree maybe a little bit going up and then just push slide my brush side to side a few little scoops like this so it's not straight and flat across. It's kind of a scoop like this. Gonna add a little bit more. Add some foliage back here, I think. Some more trees. And then I'm just gonna, I think this will look really pretty. Just gently, a little flick like this. Just 
just pulling down off of a little bit of each branch. I'll get my brush slightly wet and then dry off any drips and do that again. few more branches over top now. I'll go back into my darker colors, blue and violet, and add some branches here in the foreground. And that maybe comes here. Maybe it kind of, I love those quirky branches that kind of start closer to the bottom of the tree and then just curve over and gracefully hang down like that. Now I'm going to make sure my brush is all clean and then go in, take a scoop of white and add some snow delicately to the top of these branches down here. Just imagine wherever that snow when it falls, where it would be collecting on the tree. Kind of just picture it or just make it up. And then a little bit more white and water. I'll just pick a few areas here where I'll pull and flick a little bit more. Maybe add just a few little trees here in the distance, delicate little branches and tree trunks. round brush now and I think uh, maybe I'll add let's see here so I'm going to add a few little lines so they look farther away and I want this to look like a really old fence it's not spaced out that great or that well because it's 
kind of losing its shape, right? It's been around for a long time. And they're kind of crooked and leaning and have lots of character. Kind of goes with that crooked tree that we've got. So notice how I'm coming over here now and then making a strain to make this a little bit taller. And then I'll add my final one right here. I'm just going to add a little bit of a, a shadow on one side. I think I'll go more into my blue and violet. I'm just going to pull slightly down here at the base for a shadow. I'm not going to add a shadow to everyone because those ones are off in the distance, but just these two here. While I'm uh, noticing this here, I'm going to just add a little bit more snow collecting right there. have it look like the fence is the bottom of it's buried in snow right we'll just do a little sort of a lump like that and then all the other ones have that so we don't need to do that there or on um, those other ones I mean okay I'm gonna take a little bit of white on the tip of my round brush here and very lightly barely touching Start adding some wire. It could be wire or it could be a board. Make them stand out a little bit more, so I'm just going to go kind of underneath with a little bit of my blue and violet. And then take some white, quite a bit of white, and add that on top. And then right off the canvas, I don't want it to kind of, kind of fizzle and get fuzzy like that. Okay, I'm gonna add another layer. I'm gonna use my angle mop brush this time just because it's dry. My other one, my other one is a little bit too wet. That's the only reason I'm using this. So take a little bit of white and then add a little bit more depth here. There we go. like something there's a path maybe that this turns around and goes up that way I'm 
use a little bit of water on my round brush here and I'm going to wiggle off some of this kind of just pull and wiggle off a little bit of that paint make it sort of disappear off there want a little bit more snow on this side. I feel like it needs to be a little bit heavier because it's leaning. There'd be more opportunity for snow to kind of layer on there a bit more. some more of that feeling like there's some stairs. And we're just going to tap along the edge here. Kind of tap and smush around with my brush. Blend it out. I'm just going to go for it. I'm feeling like seeing a little castle. Why not? Just pull a few different heights. Just with a bit of white and some water. Then I'm going to use a little bit of my blue and violet. and add some little dabs here for some windows. And I'm gonna do, uh, apply a little arch on the top of each one like that. And a little arch in the front there Wash all that out, dry my brush off, and take some white. And then all I'm going to do for the tops of my, um, the turret, the turrets they're called, I'm going to do some rounded triangles. So make them smaller than you think you need to. I love painting little castles and adding little little fairy tale things to my paintings. Like you're never too old for fairy tales. I'm gonna make this one just a little bit taller than the rest. And then a little highlight here and there, kind of in the front. And just like that, a swirl with a bit of water and white, place your, your finger. It'll really help steady your hand, so. Just like that, and it'll kind of look like another sort of a railing or something. I don't know, I think it's just kind of pretty. And then I'm gonna add a little flag. So for my flag, I'll just add a little line like this, and then with the tip of my brush, wiggle and pull 
I'll show you that again. A little line. Wiggle, wiggle, and pull off. So when you wiggle a little bit thicker there, and then with the tip of your brush, pull off. That way it's gonna look like it's kind of a ripply, blowing in the wind flag. Definitely don't want my fence to look see-through, so if that starts to happen, just do another coat of your white or whatever color that you want to use. Maybe I will just add a little bit of a shadow on that one. And because you guys know I love waterfalls, I'm going to add a few little waterfalls coming down here. I'm going to use, I think because it's a small area here and I want to have lots of control, I'm going to use just my tiny little one number one filbert brush. I'm going to get it a little bit wet and I'm going to use a little bit of white, a little bit of violet, bluey color that I made with all three of those colors. So this will be the first base and maybe we'll have some waterfalls coming down. It's a fantasy painting. Remember guys, it doesn't have to make sense. Don't try to figure out where the water's coming from. Water here for this to show up. There we go. So when I mentioned that because you guys ask a lot if I sell my paintings, I do. I've been selling my artwork professionally for many years and I sell it also sell it on my Facebook page and Instagram. So if you guys are ever interested in how you can own one of my original paintings, have a look at my Facebook page or Instagram where I have quite a bit. Just gonna add a little bit more here. Maybe just one brighter one. Use a little bit more white for this one to really show up. brush side to side for the end of those waterfalls. Maybe a little bit of a spray, some commotion, a little bit of gentle commotion at the bottom and the base. As I add the last highlight on this waterfall here, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. This was a lot of fun to paint, and I'm glad I got to share it with you. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't uh, forget to leave a comment below, like the video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more. Have a wonderful day, happy painting, and I'll see you all very soon in my next video. Bye!